wrong focus. The actions that we take against you when we are with you are designed either by instinct or calculation, but designed by our narcissism to impact upon you both then in order to assert control and gain fuel and to have a benefit at a later juncture in some form. The examples of this are legion. For example, during our seduction of you, we are placing and creating ever-presence. This is done instinctively by the lesser or mid-range narcissist and is done with prior calculation and awareness by greater narcissists and the ultra. We utilize this ever-presence, post-disengagement or post-escape, in order to keep you susceptible to longing for us, driven by your addiction, so that hoovering you becomes so much easier. Consider also, through seduction, how the provision of compliments, a supposedly perfect love, great sex, happy times together, and so forth, is achieved. All of this is done, so we can not only bind you to us, but then it provides us with the material to cause you to plummet far when we withdraw all of that from you at a later stage. So much of what we do has an immediate and a later effect. One of these effects is to create in you the concept of the wrong focus. If you have managed to escape us, or more likely you have been disengaged from, we understand that there are so many things that you will be doing and that you will do which collectively are the wrong focus. This occurs to suit our purposes and without fail it always happens following an engagement and entanglement with our kind. This is as a consequence of two factors. The first is because of the way that we have treated you because it just doesn't make sense from your perspective. It lacks logic and is so confusing. That in itself creates so many questions and considerations which form the wrong focus. Secondly, it is in your nature to ask these questions and also to want answers to them because one of your traits is a need to know the truth. Some people, although of course we would never target them, might just brush themselves down and move forwards without a backwards glance in our direction. Those people have no interest in working out what has happened and have no desire to know the truth. These people are of no use to us and will invariably not be chosen for targeting and seduction. Instead, it is people like you who are susceptible to our overtures and possess those traits which mean that the occurrence of the wrong focus is as guaranteed as the sun rising in the east. So, what are the constituent parts of the wrong focus? There are many indeed, and here are 30 for you to recognise, understand and ensure that you apply logic to them. Number one, you will wonder why we treated you so terribly so quickly after we were so wonderful to you. Two, you will want to know how we could have just left you like that after everything that you did for us. Three, you will be perplexed as to how we are able to move on to somebody else so soon after being with you, especially since we said that you and I were soulmates and that we would be together until the end of time. Four, what are we doing with our new acquisition? Five, how are they better than you? Six, are we happy with that person now? Seven, what has that person got that you have not? Eight, she doesn't even seem like our type. So, why on earth have we chosen her? 9. You spend your time on X-Watch as you stalk our social media and that of the new target to see what we are doing together, what we are saying to one another and looking for any sign of trouble in this new relationship. 10. You want our new relationship to fail so that you feel better and validated because the same thing has happened to the new target as it did to you. 11. You feel a need to, provo to prove that you are happy, even though you're not, and that you need us to know that this is the case. You consider ways in which you can convey this message to us. 12. You wonder what you could do to win us back. 13. You wonder what mistakes were made that caused the relationship to fall apart. 14. 
you begin to imagine what is going on in between these four walls that you knew so well once upon a time, becoming fixated with having to know what is happening. 15. You relive the day that you had with us, and think about whether we are doing the same things with the new person as we did with you. 16. You want us to explain why we did what we did. 17. You try to make sense of what has happened, but you can't. This doesn't, however, stop you from running the whole relationship through your head, over and over again, as you seek to find answers. 18. You sit and ask yourself, are we thinking about you? 19. You ruminate on whether we miss you at all. 20. Does she kiss us like you did? 21. Do we love her more than we loved you? 22. Have we kept the gifts you gave to us? 23. Why have we deleted all the pictures of you on social media? 24. Why haven't we deleted all of the pictures of you on social media? 25. Why are we saying those things about you to other people? 26. Do we feel bad at the way that we've treated you? 27. Why does it feel like no matter what you do, we always seem to win? 28. Will we ever speak to you again? 29. Will our friends and family still acknowledge you after everything that has happened? 30. What if she is the one? You spend so much time occupied with these thoughts. They dominate your mind. You replay scenarios in order to try and answer these questions. You sit and discuss these questions with friends and family who do their best to be supportive, but they don't have the answers. You will not receive any answers from them that will satisfy you because ultimately they either can't provide you with anything or even if they can, you want the answers to come from us. Invariably, we will not provide them to you. Our narcissism will not allow this to happen. This is because with lesser and mid-range narcissists, they don't know the real reason why you were treated the way that you were and therefore you will be given some nonsense instead. Some of it makes no sense, some of it makes some sense, but you will never get a satisfactory answer. With the greater narcissist and the ultra, we know why we did as we did, but we're not going to tell you. That would be foolish of us. You will have immediately noticed what all of the earlier 30 points have in common. They are all about us. We want everything to be about us. We want that during seduction during devaluation and post-escape or post-disengagement. It always has to revolve around us and the creation of so many questions arising out of our treatment of you is a collateral consequence or intended consequence which is designed to cause you to have to focus on us. This paralyzes you. This keeps your emotional thinking high. It keeps you invested. It keeps you in the game. It repeats the pain. It holds you back. It keeps you susceptible to the hoover that will come. Our narcissism wants you to focus on us. But you need to focus on you. However, if you don't apply the material that I provide to you, and you allow your emotional thinking to take you away from the logic that I provide to you, you will always go to the wrong focus. With the 30 questions that I posed, the simple answer is, to all, simple answer to all of those questions is, these things were done because you were ensnared with a narcissist. And then, these things were done to you because you were involved with a narcissist who has no emotional empathy for you and has to obtain the prime aims. For some of you, that is as far as you should go at this juncture. Your emotional thinking won't let you absorb any more. And if you find yourself trying to unravel it further, but becoming more and more frustrated, you must stop. You are not ready to accept the logic. This is nothing to do with intelligence and everything to do with the level of your emotional thinking. Get your emotional thinking down and then it will start to make more sense. And you can, if necessary, unpack and unravel what has happened to you. But what you ought not to be doing is focusing on anything new. So when you ask for instance, 20, question 23, why have we deleted all the pictures of you on social media? You shouldn't be looking at our social media. 
You know that we are a narcissist. The relationship is over. You shouldn't be looking at our social media to raise that question. Similarly, if you ask why haven't we deleted all the pictures of you on social media, again, well, it is because we're a narcissist and this is being done for the purpose of asserting control over you and somebody else. In the circumstances, however, why are you looking at our social media afterwards? This is a breach of no contact. If you ask yourself, does she kiss us like you did? The answer should be, I don't care. I shouldn't be interested. It's over. This is a narcissist. I am now in no contact. But because the recent cessation of the relationship and invariably caused by us, your emotional thinking is so high, it causes these questions to whir round and round and round in your mind. And this is where I come in. I am that cool, hard logic that is to be applied. And if you want the answers to all of these questions and you want the help to ensure that you stop asking these questions, that you stop allowing your emotional thinking to run wild, use me, use my material, use my services, and then you will get away from the wrong focus. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.